So on the channel here, we recently made a video talking about my concerns about Halo Studios and working in Unreal Engine and uh, talking about how I feel that 343 slash uh, Halo Studios have had the issue of trying to do way more than they should to make a Halo game. But in this video, we're going to go on the opposite side of that spectrum and we're going to go with the positives and why I'm excited about the future of Halo and what that means for the entire franchise about the positives that could come from going to Unreal Engine with this new team rebranding to Halo Studios and hearing multiple titles currently in the works right now. So if you guys like this type of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. So let's get right into it. So when it comes to the positives, the main thing, the biggest positive is obviously the big switch to the Unreal Engine because that is the core issue that we've had with Halo for the longest time. Now I'm not talking about just uh, Halo Infinite, which is the most obvious example. I'm talking like Halo 5 was and even MCC as well were like big issues when it came to that. Um, I can go, we can go into a little more detail about that. Like well, we can skip the Master Chief Collection stuff because we all know like, yeah, the Master Chief Collection was a mess beyond just like the engine itself, right? And just everything not quite working right. It was definitely like 343 just like going wild with their ideas and not fully planning out things properly but like with halo 5 it was a big issue with making this game was within the engine uh with blam at the time which you might not think about that because like when halo 5 launched like we had you know this drip feed of content like the first year and a half we got monthly updates with like new maps modes and things like that forge big team battle all that great stuff custom game browser and things like that People were, were genuinely enjoying it. We're like, we we're eating good as Halo fans when it comes to content side of things. But on the developer side of things, it wasn't so good, right? Uh, we've even had developers cite that the uh, workload that was for post-launch support for Halo 5 was unsustainable. Patrick Wren, who was formerly part of 343, part of the multiplayer side of things, clarifies about the Halo 5's monthly content cycle being unsustainable, saying, the thing I will say about Halo 5 post-launch is by the end of those six months, we were extremely burnt out. Monthly releases like that were extremely unsustainable. And I think that part of that probably has to come from the Blam engine. And obviously we see all with Halo Infinite that it was not ready for a live service type of game. And that was definitely true when it comes to Halo 5. Like they had this planned out schedule, but once they hit that end of that schedule, they're like, dude, we are absolutely done when it comes to making stuff for Halo 5. So that totally makes sense. And then they decided, okay, we want to make a live service game for Halo Infinite, right? With utilizing the Blam engine, but then they talked about how they kind of went down to the basement level of that game to then rework it to make it function somewhat for a live service. But then once we get to the, the Halo Infinite launch, there was like no content support from it. We would go months and months with minimal to no content or even updates. It was it season two, I believe, of Infinite was actually like 10 months long clearly the game was not ready and the big issue behind it was the technical issues of utilizing slip space slash the blam engine right there so moving over to unreal means that they can just jump in and start working and creating things at halo studios rather than have to be a tech company like they mentioned because a lot of times when we've cited this when it comes to uh, the development of halo infinite a lot of developers told me about this as well that uh, they were developing things in the game that were supposed to be in the game, but had to continue to keep waiting for uh, development of these engineers to for the tech to be there. So then they could make the stuff that they need to make in the game that needs to be there at launch kind of stuff, like having the functioning open world campaign, the multiplayer and the live service, all that kind of stuff. Again, like all the little details about that I haven't really gone into too much, just, but just know that like literally everything about this engine was the core uh, issue when it came to Halo Infinite. But it wasn't just Halo Infinite though. It's been a very common thing within uh, any type of reviews when it comes to working at 343 Industries. Like this glass door review that was put up on Reddit to kind of give some more clarification. The TLDR was saying for some insight of what it might 
be wrong with at 343 browse for the glass door studio uh reviews here uh but basically kind of sites about the typical things we hear about upper management not listening the bureaucracy of microsoft the contract delays and also just the engine itself being a difficult engine to work in uh this is not only just this review i mean i've followed halo news since master chief collection back in 2014 like it's been a reoccurring thing i've come across where it's like microsoft the bureaucracy and the engine being a major issue and the fact that we're moving off of this engine gives me some hope. The other thing that gives me hope about this upcoming Halo game and Halo Studios is the fact that, well, Halo Infinite was a fun game. I'll go out there and say that. Like, it's an actually enjoyable game. The gameplay was fantastic, honestly. Like, the only thing that really hurt this game from really taking off and succeeding was the lack of content updates, the lack of updates and bug fixes that were vitally needed for this game to succeed. And I mean, like I said earlier, going 10 months for a single season, that's not a season, that's a year, dude. Like, it's not a season right there. <laughs> but like, I, we all enjoyed this game. Like, it, you know, people still text me to this day like, hey man, I know I don't make content about this game, but I love playing Halo. I, yeah, I love playing Halo Infinite. So it gives me some hope that like, people are starting to, you know, 343, now Halo Suits are starting to understand like, what do players actually want for the gameplay of Halo? Like, the campaign was fun. The multiplayer was also fun. Could it be better in some aspects? Absolutely, especially when it comes to like the biomes. I know a lot of people mention about like different types of environments of working in when it comes to Halo Infinite, but what was there was still pretty fun. And so I my only concern about that though is like, definitely like, how do you make a Halo game that plays like Halo Infinite, but not exactly Halo Infinite? Because I you know there were definitely people out there were like, oh, you're just releasing Halo Infinite 2.0. Why didn't you just support Halo Infinite and not understand the tech debt that comes with this type of engine issue? So there is that there as well. But Halo Infinite's a fun game. I had a blast playing it. Even like Halo 5's multiplayer as well. So there's something there that 343 now Halo Studios are starting to understand when it comes to making Halo games. And so I do trust the people there that they can make a multiplayer that people will enjoy and you know get jump in and play for countless hours like the multiplayer in this game was widely received very well so i don't see why they couldn't just do that again but also a big thing about why i'm also excited about halo uh the next halo franchise iteration is because well um the team that made halo infinite they're not there anymore like they're all gone and those people as in not just the contractors that were under 18 months i mean the uh, upper management people. For example, here is a list of some of the employees over at 343, the before and after the release of Halo Infinite. And you can see a good majority of these people, just this group alone, are no longer at 343. Uh, most notably people being like Kiki Wolfkill, Chris Lee, Frank O'Connor, and uh, what else? We have like David Berger, who's in charge, like the engine that, you know, developing the engine for the game as well. Obviously, Bonnie Ross not there anymore. Uh, this also ties into also the people like part of the sandbox team, like Quinn Del Hoya, who made the sandbox for Halo Infinite, left to go part, be part of Midnight Studios. Uh, we have like people like Andrew Witz, who's like the multiplayer lead out there, who left to go. I think he works for Valor right now. We've had a lot of and also people like uh, David Ellis, who was in charge of the training zone area that was actually a pretty nice addition to Halo Infinite. And like pretty much everyone in a significant management position over at 343 are no longer with the company. So it really is like the hashtag fire 343. Well, it seems like a lot of you guys out there got it because most of the management that would be making these crucial decisions of how Halo is made are no longer there. And the people who are there are people who I know for a fact genuinely love Halo. Like for example, like Pierre Hintz, for example, if I kind of scroll into here, uh, he was in charge of the Master Chief Collection. They bring that game up to par where it could be a playable experience. Like Pierre was the head of the Master Chief Collection and made that into a great experience. Even though there is a whole new group of management out there working on Halo, the big concern obviously being the contract stuff that's still going on when it comes to Microsoft, but that's not going away anytime soon. But I think also rebranding to Halo Studios is a big step forward as in 
it opens up the door i think more for more teams to be involved with the creation of the halo franchise meaning that i don't think it's going to completely lie on just the team at microsoft to make what's needed for halo uh if you guys remember we saw leaks and rumors back i believe it was in january of 23 with like uh bathroom spartan he was talking about how 343 is gonna be much more of a management team and necessarily directly developing things for the halo franchise which i think it kind of got debunked when it comes at least to this new dawn side of things but i think that would kind of make sense for 343 and now Halo Studios, plural, meaning that they're going to be handing off the Halo franchise to potential external teams to be making what's needed for Halo as well. So it's not all in-house, right? It's going to be teams, but also probably just Microsoft Studios in general, probably helping out with Halo. External studios like Certain Affinity, Skybox Studios as well, working on what's needed for Halo to just get it to where it needs to be so people can uh, be able to engage with content more often. Uh, like I said earlier with like utilizing the Unreal Engine, gives us opportunity to hopefully experience more Halo content than we've ever had in the past because we just know the engine works and it's easy to work with. It doesn't really take, and it's an industry standard that a lot of people know that. So it kind of gets around that 18 month limitation there, but kind of going back to what it comes to like the personnel side of things, a new group of people, new leadership, a new engine, uh, and also new teams potentially working on Halo with the multiple titles that I'm just excited about what's going to be happening forward when it comes to Halo. Uh, but, you know, just let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below as well. If you made it this far in the video, Green Hearts always appreciate it. Make sure to tap like and, uh, you know what, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let me know what you guys think about uh, the future of Halo. Are you excited about it? You know, let me know in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.